this is going to be specifically a peacock bass spray session. I'm not going to say it fast because I can't say it fast. Clearly, I have not dosed myself with enough caffeine yet. Good morning, everybody. Jen Kravasi, Jekyll Bates. This is a spray session. Wait, we're not going to roll the intro yet. I've really been into hiking, like seriously hardcore, like I haven't done in years, and I love it. So I would like for you guys for the next 30 seconds to just experience what I experienced yesterday morning over on Owl Creek. Owl Creek is in one of the rich mountain wilderness areas and I'm not going to be able to hike it starting next week because turkey season opens and it's in a WMA. And if you guys don't know what a WMA is, it's a wildlife management area. So I was very, very excited to be able to hike this for a little while yesterday. I got in about three miles. Super, super fun, beautiful, beautiful country. Enjoy, and then we'll roll the intro. So today, uh, I was going through my Facebook messages, and I get messages from you guys, all formats, emails, messages, direct messages from Insta, um, Flickr, all that good stuff, and somebody asked, Marty asked, hey, I was looking for a peacock bass video spray session, have you done one? I'm like, I've done a lot of yellow fish, <laughs> surely, I must have in the last four years, um, but I could not find, could not find one, went through every playlist I had, now I've done reveals uh i recently on the last um on the last shop update i had done something where i had made a um a peacock bass and a baby bull shad for mike buca's son kevin but i have not done a spray session for you guys so today we're going to do it two different ways i'm going to do it meshed with a black background don't really care if the head or the tail is completely meshed. It's just to give a little bit of accent in black against the body. This has already been primed. This has already been primed, but I am going to come back on this one and give just a little bit more white. So we're going to start off with both of these baits, one being a black background, one being a white background. We're going to prime them both, and then we're going to get started on our pattern. Coming over here to grab my gloves. You guys ask me what gloves I use. This is what I use. It is available on Amazon. They're a little bit pricier, um, unfortunately, than some of the latex or neoprene gloves that you can get. These are medical grade gloves. Um, I have been gifted these, so I did not purchase them, but I was able to find them on, uh, on Amazon. And if you guys are interested in using these gloves, they, they fit very well. They don't pinch my hands and they're powder free, which there's nothing worse than having powder in a latex glove and your hand sweats a little bit and it's just nasty when you take the glove off. So one of the reasons I really like these and I got gifted these a couple of years ago and I'm just about to the point where I'm gonna need to buy another case of them. But I will leave you the link down below. I see a lot of you guys using these. They're really good gloves. Okay, you guys are going to see this somewhere up here. Today we're going to be working with the butterfly peacock. Now the butterfly peacock is one of the prominent species or subspecies, genuses, all of that that you would see in Florida. So we're going to kind of concentrate on the American varieties that you're going to see in South or Central South Florida. The butterfly being one, I think there's also an arini and a royal that are now being kind of in the mix and there's some hybrids out there. But the, the butterfly has three bars on it with a little bit of highlighting on the outside. Yellowish green going up to a little bit darker on the, uh, the hump on the back. 
and I chose these two particular types of bodies because I didn't think that a shad would do very well. This is a perch pattern uh, from Johnston Lures up in Canada and it's a blank and I've used it many times. It's a really good swimmer. It swims about four to five feet, a little bit of a lipped single non-jointed swim bait. This obviously is a bull shad gill. It's your typical um, three piece, two jointed, and it's also a thicker body. Some of the males, and you guys can see in the corner of the screen, but some of the males have got that prominent hump. That's why I kind of chose this particular body style for these sprays today. So we're going to put some white in the cup, and I'm going to quickly go over this now you guys can skip through this if you don't want to see white priming go on top of black priming or white priming go on top of white priming. Uh, most of you guys, if not all of you guys, know how to do this. I'm giving this a quick once over and I've already done the prep work on this and what do I mean by that? Just a little bit of an alcohol rub on this. Anything that's got a higher pH balance just to prep the bait. So on this, I just want a little bit of mesh, so mesh versus non-mesh, just to kind of give some accents to the body because they do have some black markings aside from the three bars on their body. So, oh, I need to turn on my fan, don't I? I think you guys can hear me pretty well without it, but you guys can still hear me with the fan on. It is Monday morning. I hope you enjoyed the little water video. A little 30 seconds of zen. I did. Um, it's, it's like a whole mood reset whenever I'm on the water, watching water. It's a water thing. Add just a little bit more white, finish off this one. But again, this is pretty basic. So if you're just starting out, maybe hang with me. I try and give as many tips and tricks as I go in these spray sessions as I can. But again, yes, uh, some of you are probably wondering why the entire body isn't meshed. Not super worried about that. If you look at this peacock, there's some really bright reds in here. We're going to work that into this pattern. We're not going to follow this pattern 100%. It's going to be a variation of the pattern. But we are going to stick with the three bars, a few highlights in yellow, and spots. So the tail we can actually do on this one because with bull shad they have the tail on them which is pretty cool. So we can do a little bit more with this bait than we can with this but I can still get that black dot on the back towards the tail onto this perch body. So what are our color choices going to be for this particular bass? So if we go by this illustration I see a little bit of like a reddish orange translucence I'm thinking maybe uh, a lime, pearl lime, definitely a moss green on the back, some reds, maybe some fluorescent reds, some bright reds, some golden yellows. So if we're picking out the right colors, if you guys have these in your repertoire, go ahead and pull them out. Wicked golden yellow, a transparent burgundy, a bright red, a fluorescent, not the sunburst though, we're going to go with the fluorescent orange, just the standard orange. I'm going to reserve opaque yellow for hand detailing around these bars and around the tail dot, maybe just a little bit up here on the face. I think we can probably pull it off with that in our red yellows. And I'm going to pull down some lime green, pearlized. We've got moss green. Maybe just even a little bit of olive green. Now this says apple green, but I promise you it's olive. You can look at the bottom and see that I've hand mixed that. Uh, if you guys want specific instructions on how I do that, on how I mix my olives in different colors, I have a video. I'm going to try and find it. Link it below in the description for you guys to watch. Um, but I think that's probably good. Obviously there's going to be some black in here when we do the bars and I'm going to show you how I do the bars on that. 
Um, but let's get the basics in first. I normally work from light to dark, but on this particular one, because there's a lot of light on top of some darker stuff, I'm gonna throw some fluorescent orange in here first. We're just gonna do a stripe down the lateral line of this. I am running my pressure right around 20, 22. So I've got enough pressure coming out. And I'm just gonna add one stripe in up to the neck. Make it a, go over it a couple of times, make it a, a decent dark enough stripe with this fluorescent orange. I'm gonna also do that. I'm gonna do both the same way. The only difference here is that I've got a black background on this. Was prime black first. So we will have some darker accenting. We'll see the difference when we peel this off. And without paying too much attention or cleaning the chamber out, now that this is empty from our fluorescent orange, I'm gonna put this yellow in. This is a golden yellow. We are gonna lay some brighter yellow over top of it later on in this pattern. But for now, I'm just gonna add a little bit of golden yellow. And I'm gonna bring this on the underside. And it should be able to blend pretty well into that orange. Bring it up on both sides. Kind of get under the, that'll be a little bit more red as we go along in this pattern. I'm also gonna bring it up on the tail. Now there's, you can see that there's a fairly thick piece on this back joint, this final tail piece and this full shad. So you, I always try to paint to where it's actually going up there. But now we've got that in. Go ahead and set that aside, do this other one. And I hope that you guys are gonna get some benefit out of seeing me do one versus another. I haven't really concentrated on that a whole bunch on these videos, but as we get further and further along with your skill levels, I thought it might be good to show you some differences in doing more than one bait on a single video. Both should turn out very similarly, except that this will have a few black marks on it. So we've got that, and I'm just gonna kind of overlay the rest of this. There's not much left in this cup. Just kinda push the rest of this paint out. Maybe add just a little bit more in. Just a light spray up top. Because we're gonna cover that with our next color. Now we're back on target to go in light into dark. A little goes a long way of this pearlized lime. Yeah, I know my compressor's going off, but I can't help that. So I'm gonna cover the back. Almost a fire tiger. And yes, we could have substituted. I'll say that again. We could have substituted fluorescent green for this if you wanted a more tropical, bright, if you're fishing incredibly stained water, super muddy. Yeah, get it bright. Um, you can substitute colors to make this your own. It does not have to be my recipe. I'm just kind of giving you the basics on how you can put it on. But yeah, absolutely, you could do fluorescent, the whole thing could be fluorescent. You could use fluorescent yellow on the belly. You could use fluorescent green. You could even go a little bit lighter and just do the entire thing, fluorescent red, fluorescent anything, except for black. Black is the true standard of the markings on the peacock. Now, there's a lot of fish that don't have actual black, but we represent them when we paint them with black. You don't have to always do that. If a fish just, if you're doing some 
background or some shadowing, start using different detail colors. Wicked has an entire line of detail colors available for you guys. Everything from sepia into the detail burnt orange, burnt siennas, the black magentas. So if you look up, let's say you go to Blick Online, and yes, there is a catalog. In fact, I'll take three seconds to show you. So Blick Studio has got a massive catalog that they will send you for free. I'll leave their number and their website in the description, but they'll send a free catalog out. There's a whole bunch of airbrushing stuff, but if you go past the airbrushes, you can look for all of the colors. And Wicked has online, if you go to the website, a complete detail set. I highly suggest it. They're really good colors. The pigments are fantastic. It's light fast. Just little hints and tips along the way. So if you are fairly new to airbrushing, what we have just done would be considered putting our base layers of paint over top of our primer. So this now is completely based as is this one. This is a little bit plainer. This has got the mesh on it. While the mesh is on here, I am going to do some of the black, but before I do that, I'm going to add in some red accents while the mesh is still on. I'm going to start with this brighter red. This is a transparent bright. And we're going to accent underneath the, uh, the gill plates and back towards the tail. On the, uh, on the tail itself, in the illustration, it is red. So we can kind of mimic that. By putting that onto the tail. Now obviously, and I've said this before in videos, I do not do anything with the tail if I paint it. I just leave the paint on. It's gonna come off eventually. That's okay. Uh, fish will beat it up, water will kind of wash it away, but for those first 30 to 50 casts or so, you can have some paint on your tail, maybe even beyond that. Um, I kind of lose track when I'm fishing these painted on the tail. So we're going to kind of move that in, and then you can see in the illustration, we also have some red streaks around the gill cheeks and plate. We're going to do that as well, just kind of mimic that. But we're going to keep it down right there. Maybe just come back a little bit. We're going to do the same thing, kind of closer to the tail. Pretend like you have a tail on this one. Just accent that with a little bit of red. And then do the same thing under here. And just bring that red just a little bit underneath the cheeks. We're also going to add this into once, now we're at the point we're going to heat set this and we're going to take off this here shortly. But you can also bring down your pressure to about 10 to 15 and just add lightly some of this red into the pectoral fin. This is just trigger control. There's nothing fancy to it. Just a little bit of red in those pec fins. This does not have a peck fin. We can add it in after, but if you want to designate an area, just a little bit of red. You can leave yourself a marker for when this mesh comes off. A few moments later. 
So I kind of got distracted there for a little bit. My apologies. Um, Mike came in with his dad. His dad's in town, which is really cool. So I got to meet Mr. Buca. They're in town for turkey season. I, I did that off camera because sometimes people get real, you know, about how getting filmed and stuff. So, um, but pleasure to meet you, Mike's dad. So we are at the point now where we can start laying some of this black in. We've got our stripes, we've got the red parts on here, I've got red on the tail. Could probably do a little bit more with the green in here. So what is left to do? So before we can pull this mesh off, I need to put some darker greens on here and then add a little bit of green to the tail with, this, with the darker bit. And then we can start laying black in. I'm going to put just a little bit of olive in the chamber. Bring that back up. Just kind of run this down the side here. My pressure is right around 25. And you still have that hint of pearl, which is something that you want. And we're going to lay in this moss green. Now on the Johnston perch pattern, I'm just going to lay it in straight. But on the meshed one, I'm going to angle that just a little bit just to help accent the top of this. I've been doing this for years, just angle it straight back. Just to give it that additional depth perception. And yeah, it still looks pretty basic at this point. It's supposed to. All the details are going to come in here shortly. Add just a little bit more for this one. Kind of accent the eyes here a little bit. That just a little bit darker. One of the reasons I like to do that is because peacock bass have bright, bright red eyes. Um, so a really good contrast in that is to kind of give it a darker green right around the eyes, just, just as a little bit of shading. I am going to be using some stencils. These I've had for, oh gosh, two and a half, three years now. Actually, probably two. These are from Brian Best. I've seen this um, this lizard pattern be really heavily used lately, so we're going to kind of avoid that one. Um, but I am going to pull out a couple others. Just some basic modeling creature feature stencils. And these are from Anarchy, from Brian Best. So I've just got a couple of these picked out, just the, just the modeling features, and M-O-T-T-L, not M-O-D-E-L. So before we take this mesh off, I am going to pattern this one. I'm going to put some black in the chamber, make sure I have a clear cup. And I've been rinsing this out as I, as I go on this particular video. I'm not going to bore you with, it would just be a lot of extra time. I know you guys mostly want to see the meat and potatoes of this. If you want more in-depth um, discussion on this, drop me a comment and I will be happy to talk about it with you guys. But uh, some things, some little things I do off camera, like clean the cup out and heat set. I'm going to pull my pressure back to about 20. Now there are three bars on this and you can see I did it again. Um, you can see that they're towards the middle of the body here. So on the bull shad, because it's a segmented jointed bait, 
I'm going to leave this back part just for the, uh, the dot, the black dot. And we're going to put our three bars up towards the middle of this bait. So I'm going to use this. This is a, a kind of a camo, digital camo type pattern. And it's just a piece that I've cut out. You guys ask me all the time where I get this stuff. The digital camo came off of Amazon. And if you scroll down through the description, you'll be able to see just about everything that I use on a day-to-day -day basis that's readily available for you guys to get as well. So I'm gonna just come in, do one side first. Now, the, the bars on this cichlid, on this peacock bass, don't go all the way down. They go about midway, just a little bit below the lateral line. So we're going to stay true to form on that. And then on this last one, I'm going to put it right behind the physical. There is a physical ear flap on this gill bull shad, which we won't use, but it's going to represent the cheek area. So I'm going to leave that alone and we'll put our, our vertical line well above that. We'll flip that over. Bring that up a little bit. Do the same thing here. And the same thing here. Now just lightly fill in the areas in between those two lines all the way through. Don't get it super dark. There's that side. Go ahead and do this side as well and then I'm going to pull this off. And just kind of give yourself guidance for where you were on the beginning. So we have one here. One in between. And one behind this ear flap. And I say ear flap because it is there physically on this bait. We'll just come back and do the other side. And then the same thing holds true. Just a light spray in between to give you that color. And then on the tail, I'm going to do the same thing. Just like that. Flip it over. We get that dot on the back of the tail on the other side. And I'm just using the same little marking here. Just doing it in a couple of different rotations. And we're going to do the same thing on this bait. I'm going to leave this in the cradle in the helping hands. Make this a little bit different, I think. Instead of using the same lines, I'll just come to the other side here. And we got three down the middle, so we'll do here. Here. Make the third one a little different. Flip that over, come back down the other side. Now on this, because we don't have as wide of an area, it's a little bit smaller of a bait, we pretty much can get away with just making it look like that, which I think is pretty cool. If you guys can see that. I really like how that came out. I'm going to like both of these baits when they're done, but 
this would be my choice going into muddy water situations right now. If I left this bait as it was, that would probably be what I chose. So we're going to do the same thing on the other side. And I can kind of guide myself. I can see on this bait where I need to line up stuff. Peacock bass are one of my favorite fish to paint. It's just beyond me why I didn't do this before now. I really thought I had a video out there and I try not to do, I'm going to do just a little bit on this side. Um, I try not to repeat myself because there's just so many patterns out there. You guys, seriously, um, so many patterns. And they're just awesome. There's so much awesomeness out there in the world of fish. It really could paint a fish every day and never run out of fish to paint. So many different species. So there's that. Now, on this one, I'm going to take the mesh off of this, but I still have plenty of black in the chamber. So I'm going to add just a little bit of marking, which is there, on butterflies, into the cheeks. Now see, this bait didn't look as effective right off the bat, but now that we're putting in the markings, it's a whole different animal. do the same thing on both sides, both of the cheeks, gill plates, not necessarily in the exact same area. Just add a couple of dots here and there. And really make this pattern come to life. Couple more here. Just finished dressing out this in detail. See if you guys can guess what my final color on the back of this is going to be. It's going to be a detail color for sure, but it's going to blend the uh, the back side of this in a little bit better, I think. Let's take this mesh off. See where we're at. Pretty cool. Could maybe be a little bit darker on these lines, so I think I'm going to do that. Since I still have plenty of black in the chamber, I'm going to come back over this, in fact, put it in the cradle again. Just really feel like I need to make these lines more 
prominent on the exterior of this and I think that that's a great way to do it. That's better. And because I still have this out, it's pretty easy just to come back and go over them again. It definitely makes a difference in how this looks, for sure. One of the reasons I kept it on, I kept the mesh on this one, is because I wanted that internal, you can see it kind of in this, if you guys look at the pattern up in the corner, you can see some markings inside of this. And you just want to kind of help give it depth as best you can. Gonna flip it around and finish up this bait on the lines. What did I do here? Let's see. Yep, like that. And like this. There we go. Digging it. Just add these in. Just to kind of accent the areas that you would normally find accented on this pattern. And again, this is just a basic recipe. You can kind of tweak it and make it your own. I encourage you to do that. Always. The more unique you can be, the more in demand you'll be. I promise you that. And the fish will like it. It's all about the fish. We're finished with black. And I said we're going to add some yellow, but before we do that, just want to darken up the back of this and kind of make these look like they're supposed to just kind of match this up give it a little bit more of a profile and the same with this one going to come right down the top of the back. Add a little more paint here. I only did a couple of drops. There we go. Just fade this and feather it into the side enough to where it's going to look like it's supposed to. Nice and dark. So now that we've got most of the basic pattern in, can really see the difference. I like both of them in their own right. Obviously they're not going to swim the same. Obviously the bills are in different places, but I wanted to kind of give you a difference in pattern as to how it would look with mesh versus how it's going to look more plain. Um, I like them both. I like them both very much. It's going to be interesting once this yellow gets in here on the outside how it's all going to come together. I know the yellow is really going to make this pop when we do the external hand-painted lines which we're going to do on both these baits and then add in just a little bit of detailing after that with some stencil. 
But for the next part of this, I'm actually going to get the fan off. This is all going to be hand detailing. So we're just going to sit here with our paintbrush and look at this beautiful bull shed shop out here while we put in some markings. So hopefully I've got the camera at the right angle. So I have just grabbed a detailing brush, which is a double zero, or actually this is a single zero. You can see that I've used it a lot because you can see that my hand has curved the wood uh, just from being in my hand so much, which is pretty cool. But what we're going to do for this particular part of it is add these. It's okay. You can be on. It's a, oh, hi. Okay. <laughs> I'm just doing the detail. <laughs> What are you up to? Nothing. I just got a snack. Nice. nice. Snacks are good. I need. Fuel. Yeah, I, I need a snack, really. I <laughs> didn't eat breakfast and it's starting to show. Ooh. Lagging. I'm going to bring this into frame here for you guys. And all I'm doing is just outlining the edges. And I'm not. I'm kind of adding some dots and lines to it just to kind of give it a little bit of definition as you see it in the pattern in that illustration and it just really helps define the pattern for what it is because these would be here in real life it's a beautiful fish peacock bass are absolutely stunning try to get it as accurate as I can. There's so many color variations. There's so many subspecies and hybrid varieties now that it's almost impossible. But if I had to pick, it would definitely be this one simply because this is the one that's most prominent in Florida. I keep waiting for the day where they make the announcement that they found them in Texas, but I think to date they're only in Florida. Hey Jess. Hi. How are you? Good. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sorry. No, it's okay. Uh, that's that's alright. No, you don't don't ever apologize. We're good. <laughs> let me uh, let me go do right. You're you're welcome to be in the video. <laughs> Everybody's fair game. Uh, Kinda comes with the territory. Uh, She's a bit more camera shy. It's okay though. So all we're doing is just kind of outlining. Now I know that we have discussed doing these with acrylic markers. I do have yellow acrylic marker. World. All right, so we have completed the yellow. It, lots of distractions today, but that's okay. It's all part of it now that I'm here. It's it's a lot different than being in a garage and um, talking to my dogs. Now there's actual people and stuff going on. It's pretty cool. So I will bring you guys into that. If you want to see more stuff with you know the, the daily goings on here at Bullshad, we will certainly make that available to you guys. I'm pretty excited to do it. So now we're at, you know, I almost hesitate to put the yellow on here, even though we need to do it. Um, just because this looks really cool. Like, I'm really digging this bait. I know we have to be partial to bullshit at times, but I'm liking how this Johnston um, perch pattern is turning out really, 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 really well. So all I'm doing, as thin as I can, is adding these lines. And it takes a while. So on this second one, since if you don't want to be bored to tears... I will montage this in a time lapse for you guys. So that's pretty much all we're doing. It's a very thin, there's there's no, I get asked, one of the most frequent questions you guys ask me is whether or not I reduce my baits or reduce my paint. Um, as I go along, most of the time I do not. Uh, for external detailing, stuff that is like this, I don't at all. I just get as 
skinny as I can on the outside of this and do like broken lines and some dots just to kind of give it a little bit of natural look there. I know I'm terrible with that aren't I? I just start a sentence and just 30 seconds later I might get around to finishing it. Part of that is, you know, I just kind of get caught up in what I'm doing. Just going to add a couple of little dots and the phone. Louisiana. No idea. So as we're coming down the home stretch, we're just going to finish doing a couple of hand detailed dots here. There we go. I'm not going to go crazy or overboard on this. Just want to get the little bit of extra definition in here. So we are going to do these let's drop that in so one thing that I noticed is that the eye cavity is slightly smaller on this bull shad than it is on this Johnston perch. So unfortunately we're not going to be able to remain consistent with the eyes. However, these living eyes by fish skulls work very well. So we're going to let those get happy. I hope I've been able to teach you guys a few things today. Thank you so much for stopping by the channel and watching. I appreciate the view. Um, leave me some comments. Let me know if you want to see some bullshad activity. If you want to see more spray sessions. If you want to see some fishing stuff. You know what? I have not had the chance. I'm learning. It's a brand new state. There's lots of water around me. And what I've been doing is I've been hiking a lot lately. I've been trying to get some recon intel missions in to see where I can put kayaks in and really learn the water. Getting some good information from some of the guide services and some of the clients here at Bullshad and also of course from the master himself, Mr. Mike Buca. So lots more content coming up. I will see you guys on the next video cheers and a happy casting yeah i'm going to do back to back i think this week we're going to come up with some cool patterns for these guys these are going to be custom paints have a great day i'll see you on the next video cheers and happy casting from jekyll bates at bullshad studios